I want to repeat that so that everybody hears. And to show that we exist and that we're human. Just They exist. They're human. Where's their protection? Three, in Burlington, Vermont, shot. Now, this gentleman is paralyzed for the rest of his life. They said they expected this living in the West Bank. They did not expect this in the United States of America. Where's the anti-Semitic bills? Where's the anti-Arab, anti-Muslim bills that are for people like them? Where's their protection in our state and federal governments? I don't see it. Do you? There's been an uptick, over 200% uptick in anti-Arab and anti-Muslim rhetoric. Here's the proof. The state of Florida is the third most populous state for Jewish Americans behind New York and California, respectively. However, since the increased genocide in Gaza, more and more states are proposing bills condemning anti-Semitism. Florida is one of those states. Let's get into the story here. I just want to share this with you guys. This came across my view, and I want to bring it to you. So, Bill defining anti-Semitism in Florida statutes head to House floor with one no vote. It says the bill sponsor says it will provide guardrails against hate speech. A fellow Democratic colleague believes the definition is problematic. We're going to get into this. This legislation giving Florida widely applying definition to anti-Semitism is headed to the House floor after clearing its final committee stop for a Democratic lawmaker lawmaker complain the definition is both too broad and too narrow. The House Judiciary Committee voted 19 to 1 for a measure, HB 187, that would codify in Florida statutes a sweeping definition of anti-Semitism. If passed, the bill would define anti-Semitism as a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred toward Jews and rhetorical manifestations directed toward Jewish or non-Jewish individuals, their property, community, institutions, and religious facilities. So just so we're clear, this is a focus on Jewish people, not all Semites. Do you get what I mean? So instead of calling it an anti-Jewish bill, they call it anti-Semitic. Now, semantics aside, yes, we should be guarding against hate speech. Um, but what about black people? I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying as a black person, I would like to see some anti-hate speech bills for black people more often, right? Florida was a slave state, wasn't it? And yet, I don't see as ferocious of an attempt to push for bills that are anti-Black. Have you? Hmm. I mean, we, we fought a war over it, but what do I know, right? Anyway, let's continue. It says it lists examples of anti-Semitic rhetoric 
including dehumanizing stereotypes that Jews hold disproportionate institutional power and secretly control the world economy, Holocaust denial and double standards when criticizing Israel, the world's only Jewish majority country. Says the bill sponsored, Davy Democratic Representative Mike Gottlieb noted that attacks on Jewish Americans increased by about 400% in the weeks after the October 7th attack in Western Israel, where Palestinian Hamas, ter Palestinian Hamas terrorists murdered and wounded thousands and assaulted and kidnapped hundreds more. Now, this right here, this claim uh, about the assault has not been proven. I'm just putting that out there right now. There have not been proofs proven that any Palestinian resistance fighter has done anything like that. Just saying. So if we're going to talk about facts on the ground, that's one of the facts. Also, the 40 babies, that claim has not been substantiated. It has not been proven. So therefore, that has also not been proven at all. Also, the only child that has actually been killed on the ground since that attack on October 7th was an Israeli baby, and it has been proven that the Israeli baby was killed by Israeli fire. So, with that being said, let's clear that up as well. Now, let's continue. says Israel swiftly launched a counterattack that the Hamas run Palestinian health ministry. See, that's the thing. They're like Hamas run. They, Jesus oh, Louise. Palestinian health ministry says has killed more than 22,000 people in a narrow seaside strip of Gaza that is home to some 2 million Palestinians. Here's my question. When they say this, they're trying to discount the number. Like, they're like, oh, 22,000. Ah, uh, the health ministry is run by Hamas. So with that being said, take it with a grain of salt. Baby, that, that it has increased to over 25,000. And those of us who are on Twitter have seen countless images of people murdered. Murdered. So... It's like they could have stopped at 10,000 and that still would have been over 10 times the amount of people that were Israeli that were killed on October 7th. But they didn't. The numbers still keep going up. We're going to hit 30,000 by the end of the week for Palestinians to have been murdered, basically. Watch. is going to hit that number. And each day that goes by is going to get even worse. Let's continue. It says, in December, the Anti-Defamation League, which tracks anti-Semitism, described the rise of hateful acts and rhetoric against Jews through December as unprecedented. So it's a talk, basically talks about the bill providing guardrails and says the definition in question word for word from one of the inter from one the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance adopted in 2016 Florida law already includes it but is tucked away in an education specific portion of state statutes Gottlieb's bill and its Senate twin SB 148 by uh, Boyton Beach uh, Lori Berman would make the definition apply to all areas of policy and life in the Sunshine State. Public testimony on the bill was scant on Monday with only lobbyist Barney Bishop and majority, I'm sorry, Major Roman Jackson of the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office signaling support. The uh, preponderance of discussion over the measure came from North Miami Democratic Representative Dottie Joseph, who expressed concerns that the definition has been weaponized elsewhere against people who support Palestinians and criticize Israel. So this is the point that I think that needs really to be focused on.
that this can be weaponized against people who are advocating for the liberation of Palestinians. This goes to different Palestinian networks that operate throughout the state of Florida who are advocating for the freedom of Palestinians to have a state, their own independent state, to have their own sovereignty, to have their own determination, and to be free of occupation and apartheid. Apparently, advocating for that is being equated with anti-Semitism. Which is wild, to say the least. Let's continue. She cited, among other things, opposition to the definition by the ACLU, National Lawyers Guild, Palestinian Legal, Jewish Voice for Peace, and several nationally renowned media outlets. She also noted that Kenneth Stern, who authored the definition, has since said that it was for the purpose of gathering information and not for legal purposes. He has since repeatedly argued against using it for domestic legalization and policy. Joseph argued that limiting the definition scope to Jewish people excluded others who are Semitic, including speakers of Arabic, Aramaic, and Amharic languages. Recent murderers of Muslims in New Jersey and Illinois count as anti-Semitic as well, she said, but wouldn't be classified under such proposed definition. So by that very point, what is Semitic? Sem Semitic is not just Jewish. It's people who speak Hebrew and Aramaic as well as Amharic languages in Arabic. Well, who speaks Arabic? Would it be Arabs who speak Arabic? Therefore, Arabs are Semites. So when you say anti-Semitism, that also is anti-Arab. That's one part of the definition. And people can say, well, it's just semantics because, because it's anti-Jewish. And the thing is, is that if that's the case, then go by the actual definition. If you mean anti-Jewish, just say anti-Jewish. But because you're saying anti-Semitic, that means you're going by people who are Semites. If I said anti-Latino, that would include people from Colombia, Cuba, Argentina, Haiti, because yes, Haitians are also Latinos because they speak a Latin language and they were colonized by a Latin language speaking colonizer, which is French. French is a Latin language, right? Portuguese is also a Latin language and Brazilians who speak Portuguese are Latino. So that would mean them. But that encompasses all Latinos, just like Sem Semites can encompass all the people from that region. So by that very definition, if we're going to talk about just one specific group, let's say it was an anti-Brazilian bill, then it would be just an anti-Brazilian instead of anti-Latino. But that's like equating anti-Latino with anti-Brazilian. And while Brazilians are Latino, there is a whole host of other Latinos in South America, in Central America, and in the Caribbean. So if we're going to say anti-Latino, then that means all Latinos. If we're going to say anti-Brazil, then that encompasses just Brazilians. Same thing with anti-Semitic. If we're going to talk about anti-Semitic, we're going to talk about all Semites, not just one subset of Semites. See, that's the thing. And they basically are taking the word Semite and making it only about Jewish people when in reality, it's all 
Jewish people. I'm sorry, it's all Semites, including Arabs, Afghans, Lebanese, Jordanians, Iraqis, uh, Emirates, Emiratis. They're Semites. Libyans <laughs> are Semites. Like, it's crazy. There are Black Semites. It's true. Anywho. Let's continue. Now, here's the thing. It says the Council on American Islamic Relations said that in November there has been a 216% increase in reported anti Arab and anti Muslim bias incidents amid rising violence between Israel and Hamas. So, with that being said, I want to share this as well because everybody's talking about how there's violence against. Uh, Jewish people, which agree, yeah, right. We're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it. So here's something I want to bring out and make sure I stick to my notes. I find it interesting that people equate the support for Palestinian liberation with anti-Semitism when Palestinians are Semites, right? Ending the occupation doesn't call for the eradication of Jews. It's calling for the ending of the occupation and stealing land from the Palestinians. While it may be true that there's a rise in anti-Semitic rhetoric happening, let's consider two factors that people aren't thinking about. One, people are conflating confusing the advocacy of Palestinian liberation with anti-Semitism. Anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. So let me share this really quick. And then I also have another video to share with you guys too. Because when people talk about um, being anti-Zionist, that is not anti-Semitic. And how do we know? Well, Jewish people tell, them, tell us themselves. Let's continue. We're from London to express solidarity with the suffering people in Gaza and in Palestine on this historic day where for the first time the, the Zionist uh, the government to be taken to court for crimes against humanity. So we came here to express our solidarity with them and to publicize the Jewish opposition to the Zionist state and the Zionist deeds and the ideology, all of which are completely opposite to the authentic Torah debate, which was kept throughout the century. Uh, today, Israelis say that this uh, trial is part of anti-Semitism, PR against Jewish. What do you say about this? I said that Zionism is the real anti-Semitism. Zionists, they benefit from anti-Semitism and historically, they deliberately brought on anti-Semitism in order to uh, force Jewish people to support them. So I just want to clear up what he said. He basically said that Zionism is anti-Semitism and that the Israel state, the state of Israel actually uses anti-Semitism to force people to support that state. So they use anti-Semitism as a tool to say, if you don't support us, you're anti-Jewish. And then when people go, oh my God, I don't want to be seen as that. So it forces a support for the state so that people don't get equated out of fear for seeming like they're anti-Jewish when that's not the way it is at all. That would be like speaking out against Uganda 
But then Uganda goes, well, if you speak out against us, then you're racist. No, that's crazy. You're speaking against the Ugandan government for doing certain policies and the way it's operating. You're not anti-black. You're not anti you're not anti-African. You're anti the policies and what they're doing. And if Uganda was actually occupying a territory of indigenous people and then massacring them left and right, and you speak out against it, that's not racist. That's actually speaking out against of what they're doing. Same thing. Speaking out against what the state of Israel is doing is not anti-Semitic. It's actually speaking for and is speaking in advocacy of people who are being murdered left and right within a territory that's occupied by Israel. Illegally, by the way. So if we're going to listen to Jewish voices, here's one right here. Let's continue. And to help the uh, upheaval of Jewish people from other countries. But to say, say that speaking out against war crimes and massacre of children is anti Semitic just because the people doing it have hijacked the name of the Jewish people and they call themselves Jews is absolutely obscene. Anti Semitic is, means anti Jewish. Jewish means the Torah and the, the concept of the Torah. There's nothing more anti Jewish than the state of Israel and its genocidal actions. So that's basically being explained by Jewish people. Because not all of them actually support the state of Israel. Look at Jewish Voices for Peace, right? Jewish Voices for Peace, they actually oppose the occupation of the land of Palestine. Because they actually do not agree with colonialism, settler colonialism. So one of the things that I also want to share is a lot of times people will talk about how there is an uptick in anti-Semitic rhetoric. But what about the violence against people who are also Semites? And yes, Palestinians are also Semites. So I would consider that anti-Semitism too. Shout out to Case Study QB for this one. And he's showing a report from the Vermont shooting survivors that gave their side of the story and the update to the story. So let's take a look at this. This is one of the victims that was shot in Vermont, in Burlington, Vermont, which is Bernie Sanders' home state. And let's get into it. Coast, remember gunshots and falling down. For the first time, Hishem Awartani, uh, the Palestinian-American college student who was shot and paralyzed, is telling his story, how he and his two friends were ambushed on a November night in Burlington, Vermont, he says, because of racism. Growing up in Palestine, this is something that I'd already, uh, I'd always thought was possible. But did you think it happened here? Not really, no. I, I definitely expected it, it would happen to me in like, the West Bank in Palestine, but not in Vermont. Hishem and his two best friends, Kinan Abdal Hamid and Tassin Ali Ahmed, all grew up together in the West Bank, doing everything together, including going to college in the U.S. With the war raging, the friends decided to stay with Hishem's family in Burlington during the Thanksgiving break. Hishem's uncle was driving us from Bowling Alley, and before we went into the house, we decided to walk around the blocks, what we usually do. Tahsin and I were both wearing... Uh, the kufiya, like the traditional Palestinian headscarf, uh, for a variety of reasons, practically because it was really cold, but on a more like, you know, meaningful sense, it's because that we felt as Palestinians during this time period, it's important for us to show our identity and to show that we exist and that we're human. Just walking along the street, you know, this man comes down the porch. I want to repeat that so that everybody hears. And to show that we exist and that we're human. Just. They exist. They're human. Where's their protection? 
three in Burlington, Vermont, shot. Now, this gentleman is paralyzed for the rest of his life. They said they expected this living in the West Bank. They did not expect this in the United States of America. Where's the anti-Semitic bills? Where's the anti-Arab, anti-Muslim bills that are for people like them? Where's their protection in our state and federal governments? I don't see it. Do you? There's been an uptick, over 200% uptick in anti-Arab and anti-Muslim rhetoric. Here's the proof. Let's continue. Walking along the street, you know, this man comes down the porch, approaches us, pulls out a pistol. Tassin was screaming when he was shot first. Hisham didn't make a sound while I was running. As soon as Tassin started screaming, I was running. Did you know you were shot? I didn't quite process the fact until I like looked at my phone and I saw my phone had blood on it. I was like, oh, I've been shot. All units be advised the shooters unaccounted for. The next day, federal agents arrested 48-year-old Jason Eaton, who lived steps from the shooting and had an arsenal of weapons in his apartment. He allegedly told the authorities who arrested him, I've been waiting for you. Eaton has pleaded not guilty to attempted murder charges. Why do you think he shot you? Uh, systematic dehumanization. People would like to focus on him as an individual. Oh, he's just this one evil guy. But the truth is he's a symptom of a larger issue. The Boom. He's a symptom of a larger issue. Everybody wants to go, oh, well, that's just one crazy guy. No. This is what happens when you system... Sorry, I got sun in my eye. This is what happens when you systemically and, and categorically paint all Palestinians as some terrorist. Then it comes to dehumanization. This is what happened to a six-year-old boy in Chicago. All because he was Palestinian and Muslim, was stabbed to death over 26 times. And you mean to tell me that that, that, that who, where did they get it from? Where did, where did that maniac in Burlington, Vermont, get the idea to shoot these three young men? And it's not some wild place like, oh, he was on 4chan or 8chan, or he went on the dark web. No. Who keeps bringing this up? CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, One America News Network, New York Times, Washington Post, mainstream media. Why? Because guess what? They thrive on the violence against marginalized people. Because then when marginalized people get sick and tired and they start to defend themselves, then, oh my God, it's terrorism. These three young men who are doing what they should be doing, according to our standards, our societal standards, going to college, right? Making themselves productive members of society. And because they dare wear the Palestinian keffiyeh, they got shot or shot at. Because somebody listen to the rhetoric of dehumanization against them. And then one of them is paralyzed for the rest of his life. His quality of life is diminished because of the hate of somebody else, because it's perpetuated over and over and over. All for what? To defend a state that's de that is perpetuating genocide and apartheid across the world on the other side of the world. Let's continue. Bullet that hit Hishem struck his spine. Now paralyzed, he's learning how to navigate 
his new life. When they told you what your future may look like, or at least what the immediate future would look like, what was that moment like? I mean, yeah, it's definitely like something that's hard, but I take solace in the fact that I'm able to receive this care. It makes me think of like other people in Gaza who, you know, have been disabled by like bombings and like they are not able to receive that. I know that my life will continue, but I don't know about theirs. Tom Yamas, NBC News, Boston. As somebody that is disabled, that's something that crosses my mind all the time. What about those kidney dialysis patients that were in the West Bank and in Gaza? What about them? Especially the ones in Gaza. They're dead. People who are like me in Gaza and the West Bank are dead. You need a dialysis machine in order to live. What did Israel do? They cut off fuel, food, water, and electricity. You need electricity to operate a dialysis machine. If I go without dialysis for two weeks, I'm dead. They cut off electricity and all these other different things that they need to survive months ago. So if I were Palestinian living in Gaza, I would have died. I would have died back in November. I would have been buried by now. When it comes to what people are going through in regions like this, this is why it's important to see yourself in them. Because these Israeli officials are dehumanizing them left and right, calling them children of the dark. What does that remind you of? Think about your history lessons when you were in school. The dehumanizing language is extremely dangerous. Now, while we do need to protect the lives of Jewish people, I completely agree with that. We cannot do it at the expense of lives of other people as well. We also have to include Palestinians and Muslims because they are under attack in this country as well. Fact, I don't hear many people discussing the anti-Arab, which is anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim rhetoric that's also on the rise in the nation to what's happening. And this is like, basically like the beginning of the Iraq war back in 2003. We're, we're doing this all over again. I don't see any state or federal legislators per, passing legislation or resolutions or bills condemning anti-Arab and anti-Muslim hate speech. Anti-Muslim hate speech would also cover black Muslims too especially those who are in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. I don't see them passing any anti-black bills to protect black people either. What about this? See, the thing is, is that when it comes to protecting certain groups, the United States will do it so that they can protect the resources for corporations. To anybody that's Jewish that's watching, the United States does not care about you. If you're Jewish, this country don't care about you. They care about Israel. They don't care about Jews. If 
the United States cared about Jewish people, they wouldn't have been sending weapons to Nazis in Ukraine. And yet they did. Joe Biden doesn't care about you. Donald Trump doesn't care about you. The state of Israel doesn't care about you either. Because guess what? The Jewish people that are actually advocating for Palestinian rights, they're getting their heads bashed in too. It's about land theft. It's about resource theft. That's exactly what it's about. And don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. I've spoken about it. I've shown it on this channel. So always remember that when it comes to the issues surrounding this language, it's always for the benefit of settler colonialism. That's it. That's all. It's not about actually protecting the lives of Jewish people. Also, why are they putting, why they are so gung-ho about putting Jewish people in harm's way in settler colonialism while knowing that the indigenous population is going to resist? Why are they putting you in danger? Why do they force you, if you move to Israel, why do they force you to sign up for the military if you're of military age? So now, in order to live there, you actually have to battle against the indigenous people in that region just so that you can live there. What? Putting you in harm's way. Wild, man. Wild. So that's what they're doing here in Florida. Similar to what's going on. Let me share this also with you guys too, because I think this is also really important as well. This is from pen.org. There's rising anti-Muslim and anti-Arab hate on campus. Make sure this is big enough. Okay. So, It says, November 10th and the last month, a wave of anti-Muslim, anti-Arab, and anti-Palestinian incidents have occurred on college campuses in conjunction with the ongoing Israel-Hamas war, including violent attacks, threats, and targeted hateful, menacing rhetoric. At Stanford University, a driver targeted an, uh, an Arab Muslim student in a hit and run that authorities are investigating as a hate crime. Did you guys know this? At American University, where administrators have noted a rise in Islamophobia on campus, a note saying, go back to where you came from, and, quote, death to all pa Palestinians, end quote, was found under a Palestinian staff member's office. A member, I'm sorry, a similar set of messages were written at Yale University on a whiteboard outside of a dorm room. At Princeton University, a staff member stole a student's phone and grabbed their hair at an off-campus protest and also compared all pro-Palestinian protesters to Hamas. At George Washington University, students have reported their hijabs being ripped off, while at Vanderbilt University, Muslim students have reported being called terrorists and feeling physically unsafe on campus. In a camp and campuses across Georgia, Palestine-specific incidents of Islamophobia are on the rise, with students reporting they are experiencing hate simply because of their identities. In addition to targeted incidents, it is important to note that institutional support for Palestinian, Muslim, and Arabic students have varied. On some campuses, Arab and Muslim students reported feeling insufficiently supported by administrators who have condemned Islamophobia on their campuses, but have not, for example, create a task force or other efforts to support their students and more broadly have failed to retreat, I'm sorry, failed to treat Islamophobia and anti-Arab racism with equal weight to other forms of hate on other campuses. Contextually, it is critical to understand that students who appear to be Arab are often presumed to be Muslim and are being targeted by hateful acts as a result, when in fact their identity and or religiosity may differ. Let's stop there. 
because just because someone is Arab doesn't make them Muslim. There are Christian Arabs. There are atheist Arabs. There are Hindu Arabs. There are Jewish Arabs. But because they're Arab, they're presumed, assumed to be Muslim. And then on top of that, people equate Islam with doing horrible, heinous acts. When in reality, there's extremists in every religion. There are extremist Hindus. There are extremist atheists. You want to know an extremist atheist? His name is Netanyahu. Yeah, atheist. Right? There are extremist Jewish people. There are extremist Christians. Does the name Timothy McVeigh ring a bell? Extremist Christians. I got three letters for you when it comes to extremist Christians. K, K, K. But we never talk about Christian extremism. And yet, black people have been terrorized by some Christians. Interesting, right? But we don't paint all Christians as terrorists, do we? Even though black people have been terrorized by people who claim to be Christian. Hmm. Just saying. For this reason, Islamophobia and anti-Arab racism are often difficult to disentangle. It is also critical that college and university administrators understand that for many Muslim and Arab students, post 9-11 surveillance and censorship of their communities looms large and creates additional fears of being targeted. The concern extends to international students as well, who due to recent charge rhetoric from public figures, may fear jeopardizing their visa status if they participate in pro-Palestinian protests or criticize the Israeli government's response to the October 7th Hamas attack. Other students have been doxxed by outside groups in response to their speech critical of Israel on numerous campuses. So these are some of the things. And by the way, while we're talking about it, a lot of times people will talk about the protection of Jewish people, right? But when it comes to the protection of Arabs to people, they're not protected. And in fact, they're surveilled by the government. How many Jewish groups who are Zionists are being surveilled by the government? It doesn't happen. But if you're Arab, Palestinian, or Muslim, yeah, they get surveilled all the time. So that's what's going on here in Florida. You know, We just have to continue to speak out against what's going on there. Let me finish this. It says November, Florida House members voted 104 to 2 against the resolution by Jacksonville Democratic Representative Angie Nixon calling for immediate ceasefire and de-escalation of hostilities between Israel and Hamas. Orlando Democratic Representative Anna Eskamani cast the only yes vote joseph was absent uh hb 187 which received Rihanna's unanimous support at its first committee stop last month will go into effect july 1st if approved by the legislator sb 148 awaits a hearing before the first th of three committees to which senate president kathleen pasadomo referred it in october so i'm going to share this as well before we end on this uh, segment 
Let me share this. So this is from the Florida, Florida Palestine Network. It says no to uh, HB 187. It says Florida legislators on both sides of the aisle continue to further advance dangerous anti-Palestinian, Islamophobic, and anti-Semitic anti-Semitic policies and rhetoric. One, HB 187 is the extension of HB 741 that dangerously conflates Israel, the criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism. This problem this problematic legislation has been introduced in the House and could criminalize students on campuses, now making the definition apply to all areas of policy and life in the Sunshine State. From Florida, we are witnessing the genocide of the Palestinian people in its 94th day, and Florida legislators have failed to call an immediate and permanent ceasefire of Israel's aggression. At a time, white supremacists and white nationalists take advantage of this moment to sow confusion and promote anti-Palestinian, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia and anti-Arab racism, mistaking what anti-Semitism is, harms all of our work for justice and endangers our communities. These organized campus campaigns are derailing and misstating the meaning of anti-Semitism to falsely conflate it with criticisms of Israel and Zionism. This tactic used by anti-human rights opponents of Palestinian liberation over the years has become intensified as the movement for justice has grown. We, the co-signatories, residents, voters, and advocacy groups across the state condemn HB 187 and all legislation that could criminalize Black, Brown, Palestinian, Arab, Indigenous, Muslim, Jewish, and all activists vocal on human rights, inclusive of Palestinian liberation. We call on Florida legislators to vote no on HB 187, SB 148. Our safety is bound up with the safety of freedom and equality of all people. So these are all the co-signatories. Just to let you guys know, this is one of the reasons why it is so important to really define what true anti-Semitism is, because white supremacists will use this as a cudgel to be truly anti-Semitic and then drive the narrative and make it more difficult for people who are against Zionism. White supremacists are actual anti-Semites. Whereas people who are for liberation of Palestine, they're pro-Semitic. They're just anti-Zionist. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.